everyone, it's Robin Riley from Del Bello's Designs. Welcome to my video tutorial, Peace on Earth. Today we're going to recreate this card and hopefully it looks something like this when I'm all finished. Hey, before I get started, let me invite you once again to join us in our two Facebook groups. We have two of them, the Del Bello's Design Lounge, and that's where we showcase all of our Lavinia products. We have another page, that one is called the Del Bello's Design a la carte. And on that page is where we specifically place and put all our other designs and creations from all of the other products Patty currently has in her store. We are on other social media platforms such as Instagram, Pinterest, and TikTok. All you have to do is search that hashtag Del Bellows Designs. Come on over and join us there. We'd love to have you. Okay, so to create this card, let me go over the supplies first. Hopefully I don't have to add any after I do this, but if I forget one, I will add it as I'm doing it. And as always, in the description box below will be all of the supplies. So today I am going to be working on a card topper that will measure four and a half by six inches. This is a nice heavyweight card. This one is approximately 270 GSM, which simply means to me that it can withstand a lot of fluid. It's not watercolor paper. It's just a smooth, heavy cardstock. Next, we'll be placing that topper on top of a card base that measures six by nine inches. It will be scored at a four and a half inch mark. Speaking of scoring, I will be using my score tool, which is a pretty big one, kind of hard to see here, but Patty has a better one in the shop, which is a little bit smaller and I think nicer than this old one of mine. So along with the score tool, you need this tool, which is called a bone folder, or you can use another type of stylus to make your creases. Okay, let's look at the um, stamps I'm going to be using, using today. Kind of keep that over here so maybe you can find them. Here, this very tall tree is the Fairy Fir Tree, LAV478. I only use it one time here. Next, I'll be using the Lavinia Moon here. That's LAV431. Fir Tree 1. That is this one here. This one's a little smaller. I use a few of those and a second generation one there. I will be using this wonderful set from Cardio. This is the Pine Forest set. Um, it's called Pine Forest Day 7. Look at the number of trees that you get. This is wonderful, this set, mainly for creating the depth. So as you can see, you have like a you have three sizes, a large, medium, and small. And that just really assists you when you wanna get that depth in your card. And lastly, for the sentiment, I'm using the Peace on Earth, which comes from the Sweet Poppy Robin and Holly A6 stamp set. You get a gorgeous bird, Merry Christmas, and the Peace on Earth. But for today, we're just using that Peace on Earth. As far as the ink goes, I'll be stamping the moon in Distress Ink Hickory Smoke. Now, if you have the oxide, this will work perfectly well also. I will be placing on top of that moon a Distress Glaze. We'll talk about that as we move on. For the background, I'm using three shades of blue. Again, all Distress Inks, but you can use whatever type of ink you want to use, just make sure you have three shades. My light shade will be tumbled glass. My medium shade will be broken china. And my dark shade will be prize ribbon. Now for the stamping of the trees and the sentiment, I will be using the VersaFine Claire in Twilight along with Rain Forest. I may even use the twilight to create another layer of darkness. We'll see how this goes. As far as the background, you can see water was spritzed over it. And I just simply used a fan brush. 
okay? And some water. Along with the snowflakes, I just used my white Posca pen. Now it's, I don't know that, um, well, no, actually it's not on here. No, we're gonna skip that part, Never mind. As far as the shading that you see under the trees, what I used there was one of the Distress Watercolor pencils from Tim Holtz in Faded Jeans. And to get that color to move, I am using a brush, just a plain brush that's filled with water. These are water reactive pencils and they're very easy to move. I'll show you how that goes. Okay, the other supplies that I'm going to be using, I know you can't really tell by looking at this, but there is some pan pastels on top of the moon. And the pan pastels that I'm going to be using will be these two colors, here and here. Let me flip the tray over. This is pearlescent blue and neutral gray. So when I use the pan pastels, that's when I'll apply this Distress Glaze to seal that. We'll talk about that as we get going. Let's see, is there anything else? Yeah, one more thing here that we'll, I'll be using. I'll be using my Misty tool for stamping. I will also be using some adhesive. I like the Art Glitter Designer's Dry Clear Glue. And like I said, you're definitely going to need a water source, some type of water that you can spritz and spray. Plus, you're going to need that to clean off your stamps. Okay, let's get started. Bear with me a minute as I bring in the supplies that I'm going to be using. Okay, let me get this misty in here. First thing we're going to do... is place that moon. Let me get my magnets in place. All right, let me bring the moon stamp in. Hopefully I can keep everything within shot here. Decent, okay. Doesn't matter which way you place the moon, whatever your fancy is. Okay, once I get that where I want it to be placed, I'm going to pick it up with my Misty and using the Distressed Ink in Hickory Smoke. I recently started to do this method for my moon. I get the ink on the moon. It's hard to see because of the color and then the mat that I'm working on. Okay, and once I get that there, I lightly spritz that with water. I like the ethereal look this creates when I stamp it with the water. You see how it's a little, I don't know, it's like a little misty. It's its not super clear and well-defined. I like that. So I, I lately I've just been doing a lot of that every time I stamp that moon and I am really pleased with the outcome of that. Now, we're gonna give that a couple seconds to dry not really it's not even wet to the touch even though I misted that it's not wet at all now I'm going to bring in those pan pastels I'm going to start let me pop this lid off I'm going to start with that beautiful blue shade and I'm just going to use my finger no special tool I'm putting a very small amount of that powder on my finger and I'm just going to rub it over the moon. I'm sure the camera is not picking this up, but when I told you this was a pearlescent blue, there is a very light shimmer to this. Maybe you can see it on my finger if the light hits it the right way. And again, this is up to you how much you want to add. I just do a very little bit. And now using my same finger, I'm going to pick up some of that gray, that neutral gray, and I'm just going to brush it onto the moon, kind of creating some shaded marks. Maybe they're passing clouds. I'm not real particular. I'm just kind of 
pushing it all over that moon. It just adds a little bit of depth to that moon. Now, let me clean off my finger here so I don't contaminate my Distress Glaze. That's the next step. So for the Distress Glaze, you, I, I think this jar will last me forever in a day. I've had it, I don't, it's a long, it lasts forever in a day. All you need to do is get a wee little bit of this paste on your finger. Since I have fingernails, what I typically do is I pick up a little bit on my nail and then I scrape it off onto the rim. And then I tap my fingertip into that, kind of spreading it around, and I just get an ever so slight layer. I'm sure you cannot see it on my finger. I'm going to just tap my finger initially over the moon. I don't know if you can hear that, but you can tell, you can hear and I can feel the tackiness. I'm just gonna grab a little bit more off of that rim, getting that all over the rim. It doesn't matter if I go a little bit outside, I'm, it's okay. Actually, it would be kind of nice. Once I get that on, I'm going to take my finger and just very gently rub that over the moon. As you can see, I'm not smearing any ink. I'm not smearing the pan pastels. It's just putting a waxy coat over the top. Now, once that's on and I clean off my finger, I'm gonna bring in a paper towel. You can use a microfiber cloth. You can use whatever you want here, just something soft and dry. And you wanna buff that wax. I always go in a circular motion. I think the people that I've watched do this, they always do that, and that's pretty much why I do it. But I, I don't think it really matters, to be honest. You just want to rub off that excess. And you can see I did pick up a little bit of color, but I didn't smear anything. So that's mainly what's important. Okay, now that that's there, I can go ahead and start working on my night sky. And I'm not going to have to worry at all about covering any of this moon with the blue ink that I'm going to be using. Now I do know, I forgot to tell you, blending brushes or some sort of blending tool are going to be needed for this. So whatever you prefer using, maybe you like makeup sponges, whatever, some type of a blending tool. I tend to always start with the lightest color. I'm gonna get this cleaned off a little bit. Lord knows what I have on here. And that's all the cleaning I ever do with my blending brushes. I just put it over a paper towel, clean off the excess ink, and I'm good to go. All right, starting with that tumbled glass. I don't even know how wet this is. It's pretty, it's okay. It's going to work. So this is what I always like to do. I always start with the lightest color first. And I'm going to just cover my entire night sky all over with a very, very light coat of this blue. It is extremely light. The camera's probably not even picking up what's going on the card. Plus, I think this is uh, telling me it's getting a little dry, this pad. So I'll have to be getting a new one. So starting with the lightest shade, and as you can see, I'm just swirling around the color. Now it's starting to come out. I really like to put on a very small amount of ink with each layer that I work with and slowly build my color. It's so much easier to build slow with less ink because if you get too much on, it's not coming off. I don't know if you can see, but I'm literally going right on that moon and no blue ink whatsoever is going on the moon. It is just so well protected that none of this ink, no matter how much I put on here, will cover my moon. Okay, that's my first layer of blue. I'm not worried about the splotchiness. That's all going to get covered. 
Now I'm gonna bring in that broken china. This is my medium blue level. And I'm going to bring this in. Again, I'm going to go basically all over the card, adding this next layer. Hopefully you can start to see some of this blue appearing. Again, remember, don't worry if you get a couple blotchy spots. It's all going to blend in nicely when it dries. That's the best part of using this kind of ink. All right, getting more and more blue. It's so hard to try to recreate an exact copy of what I'm working on here. It's so difficult. You know, the other thing is, you know, ink builds up on your on your brushes, so you always get this unique combination of color. Okay, I'm going to go back to that tumbled glass and I'm going to blend over the top of all of this. This just simply helps those two colors meld together. Okay, now going in with the darker, and I am going to switch, switch brushes. My, I do keep my light and dark inks separate. Now, some of you may just be using a brush for all of your blues, and that's perfectly fine. That works well. Right now, this is going to darken my night sky. I am going to put my first layer on very lightly all over. Again, this just keeps continuing to help those colors underneath blend. Okay, you see that blotchiness? Not to worry, it's all going to go together shortly. Now the other thing to keep in mind when you're working with distress inks, distress oxides, you know, they're wet as you're working with them. So it's going to take a little bit of time for this color to sink into your card and to actually dry. And as that is happening, your colors will blend somewhat better. You'll get more of a blend. So what it looks like now is not definitely what it's gonna look like when it's all said and done. We have to allow it that blending time and drying time. Okay, let me get some more of this in. I want this to be a little bit darker. Like I said, each time you try to recreate a card, it definitely comes out a lot different than what you expect or what you're trying to, to do. I do love this prize ribbon, this shade of blue. It's really pretty. So keep in mind, I'm just using three shades of blue, a light, a medium, and a dark. You see how I'm kind of just like feathering out along this line? I don't want it to be a distinct line. I don't want, you know how we'll tear paper and we'll create a very distinct line? On this card, I didn't want that look. I wanted it to look almost as if it was snowy or possibly misty near the ground. So no distinct lines here. All right, one more coat and then I'll stop boring you with the blending. But this is something, you know, that's your personal preference, how much blue you want to put on, how much darkness you want to use. You can even come in with, you know, like one more color. Another uh, great color that I will sometimes use is um, Chipped Sapphire. I'm not going to use it today, but that's another one. Even though it appears to be purple, when you add it to a background, 
um, of a sky, it really makes a beautiful color in a night sky. It'll darken it really quick for you. So that's just something to keep in mind. Okay, I'm going to stop there just for time's sake so that you don't have to watch me continue to do this. Now, if you look closely at that moon, you can see around the edge, there's like a highlight almost. And that's because my finger, when I was applying the Distress Glaze, kind of went out over the edge, and that was on purpose. I wanted to be able to create that lightness, you know, that glow that's around the moon. So that, that works out perfect. So keep in mind as you're doing that. Now, before we go any further, what I'd like to do is add some water specks. So what I'm just going to throw some water onto my work pad here. I pick, there is some blue ink, but that's okay. I'm not worried about that. I'm going to pick up some water into my brush. Actually, it kind of helps so you can see, right? And I'm just going to, I'm not tapping off because, okay, if you watch some people, they'll tap off first. But I'm not going to because I want a couple of those larger dots to hit my background. So... I'm just tapping this over all of the blue, even over the moon. It's not going to hurt the moon whatsoever. Get a couple more big ones in here. Okay, now I'll grab that paper towel of mine, clean up my mess. And I'm going to just tap off the water. Now, there's a little bit of blue down here. That's okay. It's not going to matter whatsoever. It's fine. If I would have used clear water naturally, I would have just had some wet dots down here. But the blue is going to tie in just fine. You can see the nice effect you get by adding that. I love that. It's just so much fun to do. Okay, let's move on. Let's grab some of these trees. Back to my Misty. And the first tree that I'm going to stamp is the largest of the trees. Now, if you want to, you know, a quick lesson here in creating depth. What you want to keep in mind is the objects that are the closest to you should be the darkest, should be the largest. And I'm going to work backwards. I'm going to work from the front, the closest trees, and then work my way back to the smaller trees in the distance. So bringing in that first large tree, which, goodness gracious, hang on a second. I got to grab my tree. I missed it. I have the little one. I don't have the large one. All right, here we go. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, absolute one of my favorite trees. Okay, this tree is so big, as you can see, it's not going to fit. So I'm just going to place it so that I can see the majority of the tree without the trunk. I'm going to let just a tad bit hang off the edge. And I'm going to be stamping that with that beautiful rainforest, the Versafine Claire Rainforest. Love the shade of green for pine trees. So let me ink this up well. Now I want this a nice solid image. I want it to be nice and dark green. So I may have to stamp it twice. We'll see. Yes, I want to stamp one more time. All right, that's nice and dark. Okay, I'm pleased with that. Let me clean off my stamp here quickly. That's the only time I'm going to use this large stamp. All right, next I'm going to use Fir Tree One. Smaller version of that tree. And it's going to be still in the forefront. So I'm going to place these two close together using the Twilight. I will stamp this. I want it to be nice and dark. Working on creating that dimension. 
All right, that's good. That's nice and dark. Now, scooting over to the other side, I'm gonna just slide this a little bit as I work on the other side. I'm going to use that same fir tree one and I'm going to re-ink because I still want this to be super dark. Remember, these are the trees that are in the forefront. They're the closest to me. Now I want to create a second generation of the same stamp to make it appear as if it's in the background, just a tad bit. So I'm going to not re-ink, press this down, and just get a very light, hopefully you can see that, a very light print, that's called a second generation print, of that stamp. Now that's all the stamp, that's all of the Lavinia trees that I'm going to use. Now I'm going to move on to that set of cardio stamps. And I am going to start with the largest of the stamps and I'm going to be working on my middle layer. Now, I don't want this to be as dark as my trees in the forefront. I want this to be less dark. So let's see if I can do that the first time around here. So I'm going to tap lightly. I'm not putting as much ink on as I did my first tree here in the rainforest. And when I go to press, I'm only going to press gently. Mm, I want a little bit more. So I'm going to press again, this time a little harder to get a little bit darker. Now, if that's not dark enough for me, the wonders of the misty. You go back in, re-ink, and re-stamp. There I've got the shade that I would like to have. I'm going to move on to another one of the larger of the trees. And this is, this is kind of whimsical, this tree, just because of the way the branches lay, but I like it. And this time, keeping it like this, we'll call this my mid-layer. I'm going to use the Twilight. Again, I don't want it as dark as these two trees. So I just lightly tap that onto the stamp and very lightly I'm going to press it on. Now, if this is too much, no, that's good. If I needed more, I could restamp, but that's good enough. I'm happy with that. Now, what I'm going to do is move down into, hmm, I'm gonna do one more of these larger trees. Hang on a second here. Let me grab this one. Yeah, that's that'll I think that'll work here. Okay, I'm gonna make one more dark navy tree or twilight tree, I'm sorry, in this area before I start moving on. All right. Good enough. Now what I'm going to do is create, I'm going down to the smallest trees in that set, and I'm going to start to create the trees that are the furthest back. So starting with this little guy here, using the twilight, and I'm going to bring in a piece of scratch paper. I'm going to stamp onto it I want to remove most of the ink and then very lightly tap that on my card. So now you can see how light that tree appears, causing it to look as if it were even further back. I'm going to squeeze in one more of these and this time I'm going to do it in the green. Same technique, add a touch of ink and grab that little piece of scratch paper, press it on, removing a lot of that ink, and then I'm going to very lightly tap it onto my card, creating a very thin amount of ink on that tree, causing another layer for me. Okay, let's finish this side with layers. 
All right, I have one in the forefront. I need, um, I'm gonna do two more here. Let me get one in the back. I'm just flopping between trees, guys. I'm, you know what, I just grab as I go. All right, let me get this knocked off the ink. And then come in with a light touch. Excellent. Hope you can see how light those trees are appearing. It's actually giving me, you know, I've got a foreground, a midground, and the background. And I'm going to grab another smaller tree and just place it behind these guys here. And I'm going to do it in the green. All right. Same procedure. Light tap. Stamp onto scrap very lightly, tapping it onto my card, almost creating what appears to be a shadow of a tree in the back. And that's exactly what I wanted. No more, no less. Okay, the last thing that I actually have to stamp is simply the sentiment. So let me grab that. And I'm going to just place that here in the center. Hopefully, I have it nice and straight. And I'm going to use that Twilight, First Fine Claire Twilight. Stamping, letting that soak into the card. And there you have it. Okay, let me finish up here with a little bit of snow. Now, I want snow all over this card, but if you wanted to cover that piece on earth, you didn't want any white dots on it, then just bring in a piece of scratch paper and lay it there. And that, that's good enough, that, that works. But I'm okay if some snow falls on that. Now to create the snow, this is all I do. I take my Posca pen, which this thing is getting as old as the hills. I don't know how much paint I actually have left in there, but it works for this. And I'm going to make sure I've got some paint coming out of that nib, which I do. And I'm going to just take, you can do anything. You can use a ruler, you can use a brush, whatever. I'm going to just whack this hard. And with each whack, I hope you can see that there is drops of paint coming out of my pen. And I'm just moving it around willy-nilly, creating my snow. Let's get some on this tree here. Now, this paint, the Posca paint, will stick to the moon. As soon as that dries, it'll be there. It's, it's going to be on there permanently. So don't worry about that, like rubbing off or whatever. It'll be, it'll be just fine. Okay, I'm going to set this to the side and assemble the card base for you. Now, hopefully, this isn't too close. But let me show you how I do this. Okay, this is a six by nine piece of card base. It's the same weight as the card topper. And I take my bone folder and at the four and a half inch mark, I'm going to run my bone folder straight down. I think you can still see on the inch marks, I used a blue Sharpie. On the half inch marks, I have a red Sharpie. See those stripes? Someone had told me this hack a while ago kind of helps you when you were following because it's hard to see. You don't see that score line behind. But if you do see, see it on the bottom, then it's kind of easy for you to visually find the direction you're going. If that doesn't work well for you, then just pull out a ruler, keep it flush with the top of your scoreboard, run your school score tool, your bone folder, or a stylus, whatever it is you're using, 
down and there you will have your score. Now, that score line is indented. Okay, that's what you want. You want it to be indented. And to fold your card, you simply go against that indentation. Okay, don't fold with it, fold against it. And what that does is simply help your card from tearing. Now, let's say you have some old cardstock. I'm talking some old stuff. And you notice that it's cracking. What you can do prior to making that fold is just spritz a light mist of water over that, and that will help with some of that cracking. Okay, here we have our card base. Card topper will be placed on, and I'm going to just use that Art Glitter Designer Dries Clear. You can use whatever you like. This just happens to be my favorite. If it leaks out a little bit onto the side of my card, it dries clear so you don't see it. It's a very strong adhesive. As you can see, I'm just really putting on a very thin layer. I would suggest you most definitely get the metal tip that goes on the top because you really don't need any more glue than what you see me use. And you always keep a pin in the top of it to help it um, to prevent it from drying out in that tip. So placing my card on. There you have it, guys. That's what it looks like. Now, let me bring in the original. As you can see, it's a little bit darker. And I think what I did on this one, I think I darkened it with the um, Twilight. I think I brought this brush in and I went around and added a darker scene, but I kind of like both of them. I, I, like, uh, I like that. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, the very last thing I want to show you is how to create the shadows underneath. All right, I saved that for last because that's, if you've been following me, you know I love making shadows. So again, I'm just using that Distress Watercolor Pencil in Faded Jeans. Less is more. Keep that in mind. Anytime you're using the Distress Crayons, you know, it's, it's like this even with the ink. I always say less is more. You start out with a very light layer, very light. And I mean, I am just literally scratching this over the top of the card as lightly as I possibly can. Can you see that? Very, very lightly. And then I'm going to just add a little line under each of the trees the same way, very light layer. And then coming in with that brush that's already filled with water. Now, if you don't have these, you can just go ahead and use a paintbrush. It does the same thing. This is just a little convenient here. Let me grab my paper towel to wipe off any excess I may have. And all I'm going to do is run this brush very gently and lightly over those scratch marks that I made. And this is going to blend out, blend out that watercolor. I'll show you a little bit up close. I hope you can see that. Now, give that a few seconds to dry or you can hit it with the heat tool if you want more, if that's not dark enough for you, what's nice about these pencils, you can come right back in, add another layer, just like we do our inks. Doesn't that sound familiar? You just add another layer and you keep building until you get the shading that you want. Again, just add a little bit of water. You do not need much to get this to move. I hope it's, I'm sure it's kind of hard to see a little bit of the movement. It moves so softly. It's so nice. I seriously love these watercolor pencils. Okay, now that's the end of this card. I'll let you see the original. Again, you can tell it's a lot darker than mine. Um, no big deal. I kind of like both of them in these shades. Hey, if you give this a try, let me see. Share it with us in our group. And our, you know what? In a card like this, you can post it on both of those Del Bello pages because you have a mixture of Lavinia stamps, you have Cardio stamps, and Sweet Poppy. So this card can go on both pages. 
mix and match. It's great. Show all of us what you've created. Tag me so I can see it. Hey, if you have any questions, make sure you uh, put them in the comments. I'll get, get to you as, as quickly as I can. I hope you enjoyed this card. Boy, don't we need that peace on earth right about now, huh? Really important that we get it. Take care, guys. Thanks so very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.